Hi, I am so sorry. Um, I, I will evidently be cutting down this video. This was not the intent. Uh, my intent was to was to start soon, and then um, uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff came up. I need to go quickly grab something, so I'll be back in just a sec. So sorry. Woof, okay, so sorry. This has been scuffed start. Um, I was uh, kind of hoping that people would be uh, in chat, but it looks like if I'm not here, nobody cares, and that actually kind of makes me feel good about myself. Um, I'm going to do a quick post just to generate a bit of interest. So give me one second here. Uh, also, please excuse me if there's any lag. I am downloading previous VODs. Uh, from the other day, we had a bit of a skip. So uh, a VOD got split into uh, two separate streams um, due to the lost connection status. Hmm. Excuse me, eating. Um. What just avatar does not pick up? 
So I'm gonna actually have to like really do something on that. Um. Oh, and Wachi is getting angry at me. Give me one second. One second, baby. I'll actually let you in this time. Provided you don't fuck up all my shit. Um. I think I don't need to be on this page. Have that done. We'll have that upload uh, after I'm done editing it. This one is also going to be an edit, because uh, I don't think I can put on um, all that randomized music without me being on stream. Um, so I will do a small edit uh, on this one that's just like, yeah, set up the stream, um, scuffed it, and then, yeah. Okay, um... <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Um, you... In advance, mute. Um, only one person watching. That is okay. I have done literally nothing this morning. Oh, actually, there are some people in chat. I didn't see a couple of my bots are in there as well, but that's okay. Um, so for all those that have decided to pop in and listen to the music and uh, enjoy the stream, um, thank you all for joining. Uh, I will try to see if I can get my moderators on. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be moderating the stream myself, which is never a good thing. Uh, hi, we're going to pop out. I can drag that there. And we're going to grab this. We're going to copy URL. And jump all the way over to... Oh, itchy eye, itchy eye. That's not good. I got an eyelash in my eye. Oh, no. Still in there. Ah, okay. Um. Well, it seems that people are still enjoying my uh, unhinged autistic rants on Tumblr, which is, you know, of course, good. Um. Uh, link. Let's do a link post. Yeah. Insert. Congrats. Um, we had a previous post. I wonder if I can, can I drag you down? No? Okay, so then I don't want to do this. Alright, we're gonna go all the way up to the top. We're gonna go uh live on Twitch. Morning stream. So the only scheduled one that I have is technically Sundays, but I will be doing more of these throughout the week uh, in order to try and make progress on Godot. So uh, for any of you who are popping in, um, I just felt compelled to take a bite. Apparently, screw up my uh, temperature, but whatever. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm awake. It's morning. Yeah. Yeah. I know she's feeling weird. She's also not supposed to be lying down, but she is. So I'm gonna have to wake her up and remind her of that. Yeah, it's not been 24 hours yet. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad for her too. He's, uh, he's gonna be a little bit, though, okay? Yeah, they'll be up soon, okay? We just gotta give him a little time. And then she'll be able to go and cuddle you, okay? Cat, sorry. Um, full-on, uh, thinking that if I do... Oh, oh, okay, okay, uh, hello, kitty. What's going on? I'm, I'm eating peanut butter. 
which I know you love, but it's also got cinnamon, which I know you hate. It's the only thing I know that you don't like licking is cinnamon. Which is funny, because the cinnamon spray doesn't stop you from chewing shit, but also because I don't think you're tasting it. Oh, hey, um, can I, can I do an eye clean? Yeah, my little Bombay bitch. Okay, I'm just gonna take that. Oh, look at that, look at that. That was such a big one. Oh, yeah, it's probably such a relief to not have in your eye. Oh, there we go. That was a bit one. A bit one was a bit stuck on, but you're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish I could have an open mic stream that didn't. I probably could. I could turn up the game, but then you'd all hear my PC whirring in the background. It's not a silent one. No, 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 no. Like I said, I understand that you're smelling peanut butter, but there's also... You don't like the cinnamon. Every single time that you've done that, which I have tried to stop you for, FYI, because you're not supposed to have cinnamon, you've been really upset with what, what, what we had. And then you had to drink all day out of the water thing, which I can't really refill right now, so I might actually be going out today and getting bottled water, because they're doing maintenance on our building, and our bar water is coming up brown. Yeah. Okay. Watch. I need to make a post. Then you're allowed up, okay? Figure out something else to do just for a quick second. And we highlight. Hopefully my mouse doesn't fuck me up. We go to bigger. Uh, not really done doing that, but we can bold this too. There we go. We go enter, which is a different line. Click the link, paste, insert it, grab this, and... Oh, yeah, the puppy's up. You don't like him, though. Our neighbor's dog. Not enjoyed. Um... Oh, no, that was the VOD. I don't want to play the VOD. Don't make me play the VOD. What are you making me- no, no. Thank you. I was looking for this. I need an image. Ah, stream. Rules. There we go. One. Hit. Yeah! Hey, I can't- I can't look at a picture and type out rules and dodge my plate at the same time. My- my fingers don't work that way, okay? I can either look at an image and type things out and not pay attention to what I'm typing to, or I can fight you on it. Yeah, I know, you just want cuddles, and we'll get you cuddles, and I also know that you just try to do that to pull out my mic. You are not subtle. Yeah! Should probably do a proper intro to the stream. Um... Oh, someone popped in to say hi. Oh, okay, I can see some people popping in. Okay, okay, okay. Um... Okay, my usual tags. Streams, there we go. Uh, VTuber, VTube streamer, uh, do Vroid, Avatar, and we're gonna do the usual trans tags, and then all of the uh, LGBTQ plus stuff, because that's what we are, uh, MTF, that counts, um, Twitch stream, 
stream Twitch streamer and yeah okay okay there we go that's been posted that's like the the usuals um i've noticed some some it's been the week for dysphoria for a lot of trans people online so uh hoping hoping to uh maybe drop some positivity posts over the weekend and uh um get people to um uh I, I, I don't know. I, like, whenever I see uh, about a dysphoria going, I know that other people's dysphoria can um, can make uh, our own dysphorias kind of more pointed, especially when we're talking about them. And it's it's always good to, to try and put a bit of positivity. And uh, I might go through and um, uh, find the, the few people that I saw previously. I think I've liked a few of their posts just to, to save them. Um, and I might go through and I might uh, drop some positivity lines here and there, and then might do a larger post on it. Um, just to, to try and make people, um, I guess, have, have a little bit more, um, more of a better weekend. Because I, I know that, that, like, our dysphoria can get to us throughout the week, and especially with weekends with a lot of us that, that don't work on the weekends, or even those of us that do. Um, it can be nice to kind of go through a week and then kind of reset everything for the next one. Even if your weeks aren't a standard, um, uh, Sunday to Saturday. Um, I know a lot of people have weeks where you're, like, five days on, go, uh, over Saturday, Sunday, and you have, like, middays uh, of the week on, off. Which I actually think is pretty good because it means that you have access to everything. Um, you know, you're banking, all that stuff that's usually closed on the weekend. And so you don't need to take time off of work to go and, and get there. Um, especially because, like, I work a, a, a used to work a 9 to 5, which means I could never get to the bank on time. Um, it's actually stuff I need to go and talk to the bank about, but, uh, that's side the point. Um, oh, Redden, hello! Good morning! I'm happy to see you here. Uh, we're, we're about to go into, to some Godot review. Um, I was just setting up a post, and I was gonna do a, uh, quick Discord drop on my private server. Um... Uh, everyone, uh, stream is live. I might actually, um, you know, I, I'm actually thinking about, uh, thinking about this. I might, um, make a separate channel out of, uh, my, my lovely little Discord server, the, the, uh, closet bar and grill to, um, uh, just kind of do updates and I might actually change this server over to have like a private section for my friends and then uh, to have an open section that I might actually officially add. Uh, moderation is going to be casual on that so um, I'll have to set up a ticketing system so that when someone says something you can just screenshot it and uh, um, screenshot it or even uh, take the message link. Because I know that when you're uh, an admin, you can actually see previous messages. I'll have to do a bit of setup, but I can do that over the weekend. And uh, I can give us um, uh, sort of, I guess, a hangout space to kind of, I guess, start creating or at least generating uh, a bit of stuff. And then I can also, um, you know, have a, a video posting channel as well so that when I post videos, people can take a look at those. That might help me be more productive if I actually have a place. Yeah, I've actually been thinking about that, and I've actually been thinking about using... I had another server that I was creating for this purpose, and I called it something different, but I might hold on to that for a little bit while, for a little bit longer. Um, just because there is a company idea that in my life, if I have enough money, I would like to make. Um, and it's kind of a bit tongue-in-cheek, but uh, the idea is something that I shared before, and I don't mind if someone else does it. I just think it needs to exist. Um, and that is making a store that... Uh, um, has blank pa uh, blank blank packaged product um so like if you go online to order something um you order it and then you get to decide what the label on the uh um out of like a few set options you get to decide what the what the label says uh on the item so that if you're in the closet and you're um gay or trans and you're in a place that's not safe then you can order this in and it'll come up with things like you know you can get a binder that's labeled as a sports bra um, you can, uh, um, 
get, say, like self-help books that come up as like encyclopedias um, so that, you know, you can can purchase these tools that you need to kind of get by without necessarily alerting your family to uh, to what's going on. Um, and it could just be something like an encyclopedia on the various worms throughout the world. And, you know, something that, that people wouldn't be particularly interested in, um, boring topic items, uh, with the intent of, of allowing trans people and gay people to, like, get the resources that they need, like, you know, condoms, lubes, etc. Um, so that they can put the, the label on the package so it's different. So you still know what you're buying online, but when it comes to your door, it comes under a different package. And did you just lie down on my tablet? I know you really want my food, Watchy. No, don't go pawing at my food. Your paws are filthy. I keep having to like wipe your de your stupid paws down. Which I think you do it on purpose at that point. Yeah, I do wipe my my uh, my cat's paws down. I use a uh, uh, a small wet nap and I just uh, um, get in between there and and help her out just so that she doesn't have to lick between her toe beans and use her tongue, you know. Cats uh, are incredibly hygienic, but you can always help them out. And then it also helps whenever we have a slicker brush uh, to get you into a nice little cozy spot, baby. And uh, yeah, sorry, she's down in the corner. I really need to create like a little avatar for her. Um, but anyway, we're gonna uh, jump over because I've done my my usual due diligence. Um, uh, so we will drop you in the left corner. Um, I will drop you in the right corner so that I can make sure that, yeah, so you're, you're actually publishing part two twice, which I don't know why you're doing that. Um, YouTube, you've, you've done something weird, and I think that might also be, I, no, don't play with my drugs, those are my brain tools. Yeah, I need to get an increased dose too. It might actually help me, uh, be more attentive at work. Um, it might also make me into an absolute super concentration machine, which uh, I could use, but at the same time, I know has absolute horrible drawbacks. Um, hi. So, processing up to HD. Can I... Can I, uh, select you? Can I delete you? Is there a way to delete you this video? Uh, delete forever. Thank you. Um, I understand that deleting. Yeah, I, I need to. I need to delete that one video. Um, there we go. So let's make a video game. Part two is up. Uh, part three needs uh, a bit of an editation um, because once again I split the video due to, or the video was split due to uh, issues. And then this one will also be an edit uh, because I let the uh, music run for an hour. <laughs> Well, I got ready because I woke up late, and so I was like, oh, I can probably still make it within 30 minutes. Turns out I can't. I'm, I'm, it takes an hour for me to, to get out of bed, uh, shower, get clean, um, do up my face and everything, and uh, even throw food into my into my bag, which I should really be doing at night. Um, watch, you are the least slick person in the world. What? My mouse loves to double click, so if I uh, open up something at random, please know it's not intentional. Um, but uh, let us, I want to see if um, face cam gameplay. Oh, no, okay, that's face cam. Face cam isn't going to work. Hey, what did I say? What did I say? What did I say, Watchy? Not allowed to do that. Anyway, I actually really kind of like this setup because uh, my, um, if I need to change this, I can just shrink you guys down and to make sure that you guys fit into the right area and even drop you guys down a little bit. Right there. Hey, no, no, no. Stop. It's not allowed. Okay? Uh, fair warning, my ears might uh, clip through some of the words, so uh, um, if I... Oh, wait, you're on my stream. Hey, stop. It's not yours. Look at me. Watchy. It's not yours. I might have to stick the plate into a drawer, but if I do that, I'm going to forget it. We fed you. 
I've been giving you so many treats. You're basically fat. I mean, you're not fat at all. For some reason, you're really lean. and You're just producing muscle like you wouldn't believe, but... Oh. I also think that is because you get chased around by Avent. Yeah. Okay. I did take my ADHD meds. And if I don't remember taking my ADHD meds, and I'm unsure if I've taken them today, I don't take more. I'll just suffer being ADHD uh, inattentive all day. Well, um, anyway, um... I believe we were talking about getter and setter, which as I believe I understand that uh, when you call a, a variable with a get and set, um, you can call the, the get option and you can call the set option uh, directly from the variable to either run the get or the set prop. Um, I don't know what the applicational use of that will be, but at least I understand that, like, if you get this, it just gives you the amount, and if you set it, it sets the amount, which I can understand. Um, I understand that these can also be variables, which is, is another thing. Um, but if you were to do myprop.get and with the little quotations after it, uh, you could call it, which I think is a one problem, is that a lot of programs, they teach you like how to set it up, but then they don't teach you how to call a lot of the stuff that you do. And I guess it's just kind of like expected, but I'm I'm a dumb idiot and I kind of need my hands held. Uh, I mean, I'm also gay, so I like I like having my hand held, but that's side the point. Um, oh, oh, I could do an AS ASMR of just you purring because I get that one good spot right on your cheek and you just freaking love it. And I have to be very small and very careful, and I have to rotate, otherwise you do that! There we go! Yeah, you're cutie. You're a cutie. Did you know you're the reason why my voice training goes so well? Because I talk in kitty voice all the time now. Yeah. And when I do that, I'm actually doing all of the stuff I'm supposed to be doing in voice training. Yeah, I use you as a muse. You don't care. You're just in love with me. And I can't figure out why, because I, like, never pay attention to you. I, like, used to cuddle you on my PC before you chew shit. She's right next to the mic. I really hope that you guys can hear her purring. Um, but it is kind of soft. She's... She's a baby. I will totally actually do... So, um, just so everyone's aware, I, I did a, a, a poll. And I've been, I've been keeping track of that poll. Um... And in essence, um, I've, I asked people if they wanted to see me struggle through making a, a 2D avatar. And we'll go briefly into this right now, actually, because I can. So I can drop the stream down for a moment. Um, I, oh, I should close some of this. This would be useful to close. Free up a bit of resources. Um, so there is this program. I don't know if it'll pop up on the main screen. Um, and I've read through the licensing and there is technically a thing where like, I'm not allowed to like modify uh, 2D cubism and the uh, viewer and the editor uh, to make money off of it. Like I can't resell it if I make changes. Um, I can, I can, I can't like resell it because it's licensed and everything. And there is technically a certain license you have to agree to. Um, and so Live2D kind of gives you messages and stuff like that, but it's essentially the tool that a lot of uh, VTubers use to make their avatars. Um, it's a Japanese product, but uh, if I can show people what I'm going for here, um, I'm not a great artist. Let's let's be real about that. I'm, I'm not a great artist. Uh, I'm, I'm learning how to draw. Uh, I'm learning how to create. Um, I need to put more effort and time into it, but that would mean, um, well, I mean, it would be something that, that I should probably stream as well, doing more of, largely because, um, as much as it's something I enjoy, it, it's not really, like, drawing isn't really something I can do with other people, I do have friends that enjoy playing with me, and they also enjoy popping in on streams, so I might do later night streams with the intent of, um, 
of just having them kind of be involved in my process uh, to kind of point out what I'm doing. And I also wouldn't mind dropping it into the uh, chat section. Uh, sorry, into the, the art section of the community to kind of show people what I'm doing. Um, of course, all the work that I make is uh, is Creative Commons, if I can make it that way. Uh, meaning I, I don't mind if you want to take what I make and use it to uh, make something else. If you want to take my avatar and stick it on a t-shirt and uh, sell it, then you absolutely can. All I ask is that, of course, uh, that you don't do anything that is um, defamatory or... Uh, uh, libel or even clipping my voice and uh using it to make slander you know that that's that's kind of the the basics right like don't don't use what i've given you creative license to use to to do something illegal um that's pretty much it uh and and of course there's the whole thing about not impersonating me because uh i the person behind the avatar um the, the avatar is not an act like i i am that person so if you want to um, sort of make a joke or uh, have something sort of funny happen, you absolutely can. Um, I don't mind, you know, humor and stuff like that, uh, as long as it's, you know, understood that I am not the one that is... Uh... necessarily saying those things, you know, feel free to, to use the avatar as, as you like. Feel free to even use it for your own streams. I don't care. Um, just don't impersonate me and don't... Uh, defame, libel, or slander me um, using any of the, the stuff that I make. That's it. Other than that, for use. If you want to go make money off of it, go for it. If you want to make a... Uh, um, if you want to make a t-shirt that says uh, my favorite ADHD OCD autistic streamer on it with my face looking like grumpy or mad um, or just happy and smiling, you can. You, you, I, I, I give you the license to do that because I don't believe... If it's not something that I'm capable of doing... Um, and if it's not something that I can, uh, uh, perform myself, then I don't want to do it. But in essence, uh, I'm going to start as the free version. Yeah. It, it's, it's got limited functionality. Uh, we'll, we'll cancel. We'll, I know that there is a, a more later version of this, this software. But in essence, this is, um, I have no idea how any of this works, um, but I do know that it uses PSD files, which are Photoshop, uh, files, and so I have to find something that will do Photoshop, um, files for, for, for this, but it'll be a process, and people are, uh, on Tumblr, um, voting on this right now, um, I could link it in chat, I might actually link it in chat, um, it's, it's like highly recommended you vote. Um, it, it will be just more me figuring things out. Um, I, I try to figure things out as much as possible on stream so that you guys can see sort of my, my chaotic process for doing all of this, which is really just like reading and then throwing myself at it and going, oh, what's this? Um, by the way, oh my God, they use csharp.net. Oh, this could actually be fun to go through the C Sharp basics. Okay. Um, core features. I know they use C++. Okay, actually, um, we'll do this a little bit educationally. Give me one moment here. Uh, I want to go and find that 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 link. Um, I should probably like that so that I can find it easier. Uh, where is there? Um, here. So I'll hit that for a like. I will. It's currently had 13 votes on it, but out of anyone that's voted between yes and no, it has been 100% yes. Um, it's been about a 50-50 between the I don't have an opinion and, uh, a yes option, but no one has voted no, so, um, I will copy a link and I will drop that in chat. Um, basically, what I wanted to know, oh wait, no, I have a different chat bubble option. What I wanted to know, and this is, this is this here, uh, link to Tumblr vote, I will have to set up more bots for stuff like i really wish there was just a bot that i could like set up to like give links and little bits of ex explanations but anyway that's that oh hold up hold up um i really wish i could don't use that link use this one without the question mark share there you go okay so the reason why I say use the second one and not the first is if you notice that little last bit there where it has the question mark that says source equals share, 
Um, if you see that question mark after, you know, the, the very clear link icon, so if it says like, you know, Tumblr, Tally, Tally Sidekick, that whole blog uh, um, identifier, and then the name of the post, anything that's the question mark after that is actually a tracking cookie built into the link so that when you click that link, the site can, as you're entering the site, see where you came from and log that as information. Um, I'd highly suggest clearing those links if you can. Um, I think Firefox does actually have a way where you can, uh, you can, if you click on it or whatever, and you go to copy, you can, yeah, so here. So say this is, this is the, the, um, this is the, the, uh, post. Okay. So I've, I've clicked on the post. It, I found it here. I've clicked on the post to, to get it to load up. And if I wanted to uh, copy this and say it's a link or a share link, I can literally right click and copy without site tracking. And what that will do is that will allow me to copy and then paste the link as I've done in chat. Um, and you'll see it pop up there. It will uh, copy out that so it doesn't have the, the share uh, <clears throat> info. The only time that that doesn't work is when you have uh, stuff like this. Um, you're, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna copy it with the, the question mark. So you're gonna have to potentially uh, copy, paste that, and then um, do the whole aspect again of uh, like potentially even copy it, put it in your own browser, link it, uh, go to it, and then right click and then copy without um, site tracking uh, just to, to get that to go through. Um, I highly recommend doing it because uh, site tracking is it's more advertising information and ultimately I think I have a problem. I have a problem with the way that the world does site tracking and uh, does um, sort of like tracking for your, your advertisements and stuff. Um, and that is, instead of it being opt-in, it's opt-out. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, it should always be opt-in uh, so that you can choose whether or not you're going to be giving out that data. And it should also be very clearly explained in layman's terms, not in legal terms. Uh, a lot of people don't understand legal speak and it should be... Um, hmm. I am bleeding. I'm just not sure from where. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, it should always be opt-in, um, but it's not. So we're this is where we are today in uh, having Firefox offer you the opportunity to copy without site tracking. Um, Firefox also makes sure that cookies in between different tabs, so say if these were different websites, they're not going to trade over to each other. Um, it's going to stay within it. Uh, there's whole settings that you can have set up uh, to, to enable that. Um, of course, if you have Google accounts like I do, make sure you go into your Google settings for every Google account you create and turn off um, uh, ad tracking and all that. Um, you'll you'll want to do that because it it's even though uh, Google is going the route of making um, tags instead of selling the raw data, um, they're sort of protect um, location information and all of that. Um, it's still good to have it done with uh, Firefox because even if someone, say, makes a cookie that's their own third-party one to try and track you, it can't jump through things, so it just kind of keeps it on the site and prevents it from uh, going through. And I personally um, think that that's a, a good thing to have. Where did the little critter go? Oh, you're just getting warm. Yeah, I love you too, baby. She's cute. Anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the... Um, that's kind of the, the, the gist of website tracking. It's it's kind of a lot to take in, but in essence, uh, get Firefox. There's settings. You can usually find a tutorial online, uh, actually from Firefox, to uh, do that whole thing for you. So uh, you can basically just go through, set it all up, and you're good to go. It can also pull your... Um, uh, it, it's, it's something that I've done before, but basically you can um, go to a password section, and uh, once that opens up, you can... Um, oh, I should not be showing that. Well, I was expecting that to, to do something a bit different, but basically what you can do is you can go into your settings and uh, you can import stuff. Um, there's a way to do it with your, your privacy and security. Um, uh, and yeah, you can um, sort of set things up. I have a couple cool things like tree style tabs, which allows me to do something like this. 
so that I can see what my individual tabs are. Um, I just kind of like doxed a whole bunch of my, I didn't dox the passwords, I just doxed a whole bunch of websites that I go to, but largely that is like Alberta student aid and stuff like that because I have student loans, um, which is perfectly normal to have. And if you want to hack into that and, uh, and pay off my student loans, you are welcome. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, I need the help. Um, okay, I need to... Ugh. I need to check VC face here. Am I am I within the parameter limit of what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I... Am I... Oh, that's too high. That's not low enough, so I need to be up a little bit. There we go. I have to be careful where my camera is calibrated. But anyway, um... There are websites and stuff that you can go to to uh, um, sort of assist uh, your... Oh, where's my chat again? I keep losing it. Uh, there's websites and stuff that you can go to to uh, um, kind of keep your stuff safe as well. Uh, there are services that are offered online. You can also take a look at this. It actually does uh, tabs it out, by the way. Uh, tree style tabs, something that I, that I suggest. Um, because as much as, as I love having the tabs on the top, um, the tabs down the side actually do me a lot more good in a lot of cases, just because I can uh, check that out. There is actually, um, I think it's, is it Control-T that brings it? No, that's new tab. Uh, hi, can I? Not that's my new No. I can, I can like, I think it's alt T or something or something like that. I can't remember. There's, there's a, uh, a command on here that lets me open it up automatically. And it, is it this? Or is it this? No, it's not either of those. Uh, tree style, style tabs, key command to open. I need to remember this. Uh, it's alt Q. Why is alt Q not working? Do I not have that set up? Am I, am I not setting that up right? Context menu. Flaps, expand all. Load this tree, close dependency. Nice. No, I need I need settings for you more. Drag. Keep drag. I think I might have like overdone it with another um option. Well, it's up here, and that's all I really need. I can click it. Um, but I should just be able to, if I'm correct, move that, but I might need to shift click and move. But yeah, you can set it up left or right. Um, but anyway, it's, it's something that I recommend just because like it, it does nest things. So when you've opened tabs from other tabs, it will like load them in correctly. Um, and just allows you to kind of like organize everything. So if you have 50 million tabs open, uh, then you can kind of know where you've kind of created uh, sort of the, the the trees. And the interesting part is, is this is kind of how like, um, we'll get into it, but this is actually how nodes work um, in like node trees and stuff like that. And this is actually how files work in your, your drive. Um, it's all sort of linked together and each uh, sub child inherits values from the, from the parent node. Uh, so you can make, of course, restrict things as they go down, but the the privileges, unless restricted, will cascade from the parent downwards. Um, so if you need to uh, call a setting or uh, an ability, you can typically do that unless the child has it restricted for some reason. Um, so there are are it's interested uh, interesting ways of, of organizing data. Um, it's kind of how uh, uh, 
the file tree is sort of how your um, USBs and everything, why they need formatting is because different uh, operating systems have different uh, formatting trees. So that's the reason why, say, uh, a Windows formatted USB won't necessarily work with a, um, well, I mean, the base USB will work, but like, uh, um, for example, a Windows USB won't work with a Mac. Like you'll have to format it to get it to work. And, and the reason for that is just, it's a different file structure. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that. This will be the, the nodes and stuff will be, uh, fun stuff. So now I'm just going through basic code review. Um, by default scripts don't run inside the editor. Okay. By default scripts don't run inside the editor and only the extended properties can be changed. In some cases it is desired that they do run inside the editor. As long as you don't execute game code or manually avoid doing so. Well, I mean, that makes sense. You don't want it to run inside the editor. You want it to run when the game is running. That's the whole point of the scripts. Um, the editor is just to, to edit your code. Hi, Wachi, you're back. What is going on? You're telling me to eat is what you're telling me to do. But if you do want to run it, you can use tool annotation. This tool annotation exists and must be placed at the top of the file. Okay, memory management. Go to implements referencing, reference counting to free certain instances that are no longer used instead of a garbage collector. Instead of a garbage collector or requiring a requiring purely manual management. Any instance of the refund counted class or any class who inherits it, such as resource, will be freed automatically when no longer in use for instance. For instance, for an instance of any class that is not a ref counted, such as node or the base object type, it will remain in memory until it is deleted with the free or queue free for nodes. Okay. If a node is deleted by a free or queue free, all of its children are also recursively deleted. Okay. Okay, okay. So if if I'm if an enemy is despawning or something like that, uh, what I should do is I should call uh, the free one so that I can, I can kill, um, uh, it and any, and any child, uh, um, just remain in memory. Hey, watch, don't do that. Remain in memory until it is deleted with free. Okay. Use. Okay, will be children will be cursed recursively deleted. Okay, so if a node calls calls any other nodes, etc., um, or even object, uh, it will be. I don't know if objects will be recursively uh, deleted, but I guess if it's just an object instance and we've done the object right, we don't have to add any other objects to it. Then um, we will. It will recursively delete. There's just going to be a lot of learning about how to manage memory so they don't cause memory leaks. Which, by the way, is when um, you don't delete objects and your, your game just keeps loading more and more stuff into, into your RAM until your RAM can't take it anymore, and then the game crashes. Hmm. Technically, the stream time is supposed to be over, but I started late, so I will push this till 10. Well, I will then make sure I have everything. Um, and by that, I mean, I might take another snack with me to, uh, to work, um, and then see if I still have a job because I'm not supposed to miss more than 16 hours of their training. But unfortunately I had to take my spouse to surgery, which is fine. Um, but then ended up getting like, uh, uh, because it was just a lot of stress and a lot of like me doing things. My body decided, Hey, you know, that, that, that issue that you have where you get like too warm and then your your stomach locks up and uh it's extremely and excruciatingly painful we're gonna do that again so i've had three episodes in three days um which is not good because the 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 drugs last for like 12 hours on me so if i take one of those i'm not supposed to drive and so it's like it really sucks because like it it does mess with my muscle and my with my reaction times um and I've visibly noticed that, so I've got to be careful. I need to talk to my doctor about that, but my doctor wasn't available for the last two months. So uh, now I have to go and talk to them on potentially, I think it's the 8th. I'll have to go and double check. Um, I actually have a bunch of stuff that I need to check on. 
uh, just to make sure that I'm on top of everything. Um, which is funny because normally I'm really good at being on top of everything. Um, oh, I need to set up the contact me email as well. Yeah, I'll be having a contact me email uh, set up to, to my account for business purposes. It'll be interesting. Um, it'll be sort of the, the way that people can contact me uh, via um, any of my accounts. So that way, any of the accounts that I have that are managing any of these individual streaming platforms, which, by the way, I use a different email for each one. Um, I have an email for the Twitch streaming. I have an email for YouTube. I have an email for... Uh, the Tumblr, I have an email for the Ko-Fi, um, I have an email for the Instagram too, um, and the whole reason for that is, is that if anyone tries to hack any one of those accounts, they're only going to get one, they're not going to get the parent account. Um, and that's that's kind of the, the whole idea, uh, is to make sure that all of those are in separate places. That does mean that I'm managing multiple emails, but I kind of have to do that because it's, it's security. Um, so, like, if you take over one, congratulations, I, I have the parent account that I can get it back on, um, and I'm always logged into that parent account for other reasons, uh, just so, um, okay, Watchy, yeah, that's, that's great and all, um, I don't trust you at that angle, though, because this is, this is where my, um, my wire is, and you are a horrible bitch when it comes to wires and them being in your face, that I, like, literally have to somehow manage to uh, do this every single time. Also, I got a really cool comment recently. Um, as I'm going through this, I got a really cool comment re uh, recently on um, on YouTube of all places, where my, um, uh, on one of my videos, where someone was like, you have a really good soothing voice. And I was like, I've never heard someone say that to me before. It was, it was interesting. Anyway. Uh, no deleted via free queue. All the children will be deleted. Okay. Um, to avoid reference cycles that can't be freed, a weak ref function is provided for creating weak references, which allow the object with... which allow access to the object without preventing a ref counted from freeing. Here's an example. Okay. My file... Uh, function f file access dot open weak ref f my file dot okay file access inherits the file access class inherits ref counted so it will be freed when not in use okay extends node var okay uh, function this is called later my file get my file dot get ref if my file my file dot close if it's my file okay my file dot close I wonder what it's checking with my file if it's been filled or if it's null because if it's null it'll come up as false. I'm not using References, certainly when I use references, the is instance valid instance. Certainly when not using references, the this can be used to check if an object has been freed. Okay, well, we'll have to... A lot of this is going to be use case. I got something you can be on top of. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, girlfriend getting frisky in chat, I see. Um. Uh. Um, okay. Thank you for, for making me blush. I, I'm, I'm so glad that my, uh, uh, face tracking software does not have the ability to check the redness in my cheeks. Um. <laughs> is that will have to be a button press. Um, but I actually don't know, because as far as I'm aware, uh, VTube Studio, I don't think, comes with its own face tracking software, but there is a possibility that uh, there are a bunch of other ones out there 
we'll have to fix that then. Yeah, no, um, we're gonna have to fix a lot. Uh, when, when we're making the VTube avatar, where there's gonna be like the basis, but there's like so much stuff you can do. Um, and it might be even be, depending on, on how far we get, we might be, I might need to actually buy the professional version, which is a limited time subscription, to actually make the avatar the way I wanna make it. And if I'm going to do that, I might open myself up to making other people avatars for the sake of just getting use out of it before it expires. So like if, if I'm if I'm paying for it and I'm doing a, a subscription for it and I have like 30 days left or whatever, I might just be like, hey, um, who wants a free avatar? Because I have the software and I'm willing to do the artwork and like put it all together. Um, here's the style that I do, which by the way, I should show you guys this, uh, the style and give me a second. I will do this in a new tab. Um, Uh, thank you, Stefan. So I came across this art style from a very particular artist, and, um... I have been... trying to create a similar style, um, to this. Uh, they used to do DC Comics, but I kind of, like, took a look at the, um, at the art style. I'm doing my best. This artist does a lot of, um, I don't want to, I don't want to do spoiler stuff. I want to do cover art because if it's cover art, it's fine, but I don't want to like grab, um, yeah, we'll do this. Um, I will talk about the artist in a moment. It's just, I like the style, and I was like, you know, this could be a very fun project to do, and especially if something interesting on VTube, because for VTube avatars, you get a lot of anime. Um, uh, open image and new tab. What is this gonna look like? There we go, okay. Um, so, the artist's name is in the bottom of the image, so I will take this out and I will show you. Uh, this is this is the style that I'm kind of going for. Um, I'll try to increase that so that y'all can see. Um, this is sort of the the general style that I'm going for. That I want the uh, the the new avatar to follow. Um, I kind of got interested in the art style because I saw it first, and so I've been I've been working towards this. I'm not good with the shading, but I figure there could be enough. It's it's the shading with the hard lines that that I'm I'm really enjoying, um, and it's the fact that there is a bit of texturing that is done with hard lines as well, uh, that that I kind of want to um, embody in the new avatar, uh, in in a sense, because a lot of avatars you you see and you can look up like VTube avatars, like oh I, I don't know if I should actually do that. Uh, VTube avatars can be. Um, Like, you, you've got a lot of, um, you can just type in VTube avatar and do a search for yourself, uh, because some of these are, um, I know that they're okay on Twitch, but it's also not my work, and it's also not my persona, but there are a lot of people who do VTube avatars, but they're all very anime style. And so I was like, well, if, if this PSD file gives me the ability to draw my own, like, base, faceplate, and, um, sort of set up my shaders and everything, uh, the way that I want to go, then why wouldn't I do something that's a bit more um, Western, you know, a, a bit more of a, a less um, Japanese or um, uh, sort of Korean or uh, Chinese um, uh, animation style and something that's a bit more on the Western side, um, which kind of made me like think that like, oh, well, this could be a very interesting use of, of a software that, you know, could end up being pretty good. Um, and I, I know that there's uh, there's other um, uh, artists out there that have done, um, and streamers that have done um, different uh, avatar looks. But the the thing with those avatar looks is they're all they're like ha 
how to how to put this. I don't have the words for this. I know what I want. Um, I don't know how to how to go and do it, but like, uh, they're very, um, there's like modern American animation has has kind of gotten more, I guess, bubbly and a little bit less uh, hard lines. Um, even for a lot of adult stuff, and like we see that with, of course, um, things like the Owl House and other, uh, um, and other, uh, animation styles where it's like, it's the big eyes and the, like, compacted features look. And I, I just, I don't want, I don't want to do that, per se. I want something a little bit more realistic. Um, I even tried to do that with this avatar, which is why the eyes are, uh, spaced a bit more and um not quite so close together uh was because i was trying to go for something a little bit more on the realistic side but there's only so much you can do with a 3d editor that has a a fixed uh um face that that would you know otherwise require me to um, uh sorry checking on my cat um that would otherwise have me i didn't realize that my uh shoulders could change hello i thought those were fixed spots um anyway uh yeah, I just I want something that's that's a that's a bit I guess different. Um, not more to more or less to stand out, just because I I like that style and I think that that would embody me a little bit more. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm going for. Uh, so I will be trying to do a uh, an avatar that kind of matches a bit more, not entirely to my face because I have a problem with my face, but like you know something that's a bit more closer to uh, my face shape as well as um, a, a bit of a different style. Um, and we'll see, we'll see, because I'll still have to figure out how to do expressions, especially with uh, uh, Stepan's kind of uh, style of, of uh, art. Um, the eyes aren't necessarily really big, so it, it might fall a lot more to the mouth to do a lot more of the expressing. Um, but even then, the, the eyes can still be expressive, and, and we can see where that goes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my goal, is, uh, is that, you know? Um, so we will have to see, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's an ambitious project, but at the same time, like if I'm going to do something, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be ambitious about it because even if I fail, then that means that at least I got somewhere, right? And it's better than me starting. If I start somewhere small and I get good at it, it's very easy for me to lose focus. So jumping into a big project allows me to understand where my end goal is. And then I can start the small in a small way and I can work bigger. Um, because if, if I don't have clear objectives, once I've reached those objectives, I'm, I'm not able to, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having a brain issue. Sorry, guys. Um, that happens. But yeah, no, I've, I've got, I've got plans. Um, and I've been going over, uh, some of this. Um, privately as well, uh, with the goal of trying not to, to be doing, um, so much of this, uh, just reading. I'd, I'd like to actually be able to, to start writing code and start, like, showing people what we're doing and, you know, the, the, um, code of what I'm creating. And I understand a lot of people are going to be like, well, what if someone steals your code? And I'm like, well, someone wants to go and take my code, go for it. Make, make the game. Um, I'm, I'm here to learn how, and if you want to take the idea and make something, something out of it, go for it. Like, it's 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 one of those things of um i can't stop you even if i asked you to because i'm technically putting it online which makes it publicly available um it's not proprietary it's not you know nda it's it's just me coding so um if you want to take the idea and build the game before i do go for it uh because in the process of once we're done all doing this and have ran through the 2d tutorial we will be doing a design document about like the the next make uh the the sort of the the big game that um uh i want people to be involved in on twitch with um so i'm kind of hoping that these streams kind of like let people slowly generate the hype of like wanting to come around also um but yeah so it's, it's just going to be one of those uh one of those kind of slow burn things i guess um and as a complete unrelated aside, if you notice, I actually have so, uh, one percent of the goal for making rent. Um, rent's due today. 
so yeah, this is this is uh, this is not happening. Um, I get to show up to work to see if I even have a job, and if they're like, yeah, you don't, you need to go home. Um, then I'm gonna have to start searching for jobs because I need a job that can pay me now, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna need money ASAP because I think my spells. I think what's ha what's happening is replying to put what we need for rent on the credit card, which means that's that's gonna max out the card, um, and I need to pay that off stat. So I need I'm gonna need a high paying job, um, which means I am officially actually applying to um, uh, gaming companies now, which scares me because I don't know how to do games, um, which is what makes this more more important. So if I come back and I'm streaming later today. Um, I will be uh, on the side applying to a whole bunch of jobs while also doing reading um, with the intent of trying to do uh, to not only raise enough money to, to pay off what, what I owe on my credit card, but also to um, uh, try and learn as much as possible. Because if I'm applying for these jobs, I, I need to be able to at least understand the fundamentals of game programming, um, which I don't really understand how to do. And if I can learn it in Godot, I'm pretty sure I can apply it to, to elsewhere, but we'll have to see. It's... This is a scary time for me. Um, I'm having a lot of medical problems that I never used to have before, or if I was having before, I was ignoring them, and I was just powering through them, and I can't do that anymore. My, my body can't take it. It's uh, not good for my health. Um, yeah. Things, things are rough. Um, but we'll have to see. It's kind of been weird because it's like, I'm pretty sure what's happening to me is a mix of IBS and uh, the seizing issue I had as a child. Um, as a very young kid, I used to get seizures, but they were like the grandma seizures. But then I've kind of looked at my life and realized that the kind of seizures that, that developed later on as I grew weren't the, the you know, full-on body tensing ones. They were the ones that, like, there still is tensing, there still is, like, but it's it's not noticeable. It's, it's more like I just... I. I can be talking to someone and all of a sudden if I have one of those episodes it's like oh shit this is happening and then I'm just out of it like I, I, I lose focus and I'm there but I'm not and I don't know what's happening to me and I'm just sitting there trying to focus on one simple thing to try and keep myself uh, in reality um, if I even can because sometimes it's just I've woken up and I've, I've, I've had one of these episodes and it's like, I don't know where I am. I, I know I'm, I'm physically in my home, but I know I'm safe, but um, I, I could be across the galaxy at that moment. And that's that's the part that scares me, you know? I'm, I'm not, um, it's not great and I don't know how to describe them. And I don't know if those even are seizures. It's just that my doctor is, is skeptic of it and I'm like go oh, great that's fine but like I'm still having these episodes I'm still having uh intense pain and um it's not like abdominal dis abdominal discomfort like I have literally screamed because there's nothing else I can do it it hurts so much and the medication it helps it, it helps reduce the the pain um but once again it's 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 such an intense experience that it's like there have been times where I have had 911 dialed in my phone and all I needed to do was hit call. And the only thing that stopped me was because I'd been through it before and I knew that uh, if I just waited it out, I'd be fine. But it was still one of those moments of like, I, I went all the way up to opening my phone, going to the dial option, typing in 911 and then just pausing because I also know that they can't do anything to help me. The paramedics can't do anything to help me. They gotta wait until it's over. And then they take me to the hospital, and there's nothing the hospital can do. Like it's it's not it's not a matter of hey I'm I'm dying and I need to go to the hospital to keep myself alive. It's a matter of this episode is happening and I have to wait it out and wait till it's over. But it is the most excruciating pain I've been in in my entire life. And so I'm I'm having those episodes on top of needing to go to work. And it's like when I take the 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 muscle relaxants, which is buscapon, um, which is supposed to like help with you know, period cramps and IBS, um, it, it messes me up. It really does. Um, all muscles in my back release, it, I don't know if it's supposed to have the effect that it does on me, but it does work. And that's why I haven't really like complained to my doctor about any of it, but like it, 
it messes me up. It makes it so like I can't, I can't really hold anything with a decent grip. It's literally just relaxing the muscles that I have in my stomach, and it's not great. I don't, I don't feel safe driving as well because it's like it it, it does strangely affect my vision. And I don't know if anyone else has any experience with this, but like. It doesn't even really like get rid of the pain, it just reduces it to like a, a level that um, is manageable for me. I would not say it's manageable for the average person. I would say the average person that's getting uh, sort of the, the pain that I feel when I'm on Buscapon is probably stuff that they would still go to talk to their doctor about, but I'm used to such excruciating pain that I can black out that like... When I don't black out, I'm like, oh, this is better. But like, I, I, I still think that I'm kind of, I have too much trauma to, to recognize what's okay, which I guess is why I like share a lot of this is because I kind of want to know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally stuck waiting for that episode to pass and I can't do anything. Um, and, um, it's like a 50, 50 chance if my stomach has contracted to the point that it is now, uh, forcing everything out of my like, sorry, my abdomen has contracted to the point that it's forcing everything out of my stomach and just through me. So there are days where, like, I know that this is going to happen, but all I have is water because then then it's less worse. Um, I think I might need to talk to my doc. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's rough. And it's like, I just, I just want to be a normal person. I just want to be able to show up to work and do my job and, and, you know, help the people that want to be helped and then leave it at, at work at the end of the day, come back and do this and stream and talk and build a video game and, and, you know, have fun. But then there are little days where it's like, I, I set up myself to stream and I'm literally a button press away from starting the stream. And all of a sudden my body's like, yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna have another one of these episodes. It's it's coming in in thirty minutes. Take your pills. And sometimes I don't even know. Sometimes I I get like those same uh, sort of symptoms, but then nothing happens. Like I I had them this morning, and I was like, I don't want to take another pill and miss another day. And so I didn't. And now it's passed. But it was full indication that it was going to happen. So I don't know if it is going to happen. I don't know if it's gonna happen later. It's... I just really wish I could be a normal person and make a stupid video game and have fun making video games because it's something that I've always wanted to do and I went to school for it. Um, I knew that, that I could be able to use the programming in a programming degree, you know, and actually maybe help build programs for uh, a company, you know, or, or, or help manage software or help do updates, that kind of thing. I knew, knew that the job behind it, the physical job, would not be glamorous. Um, and I wasn't looking for glamorous. I was looking for the ability to, to come home at the end of the day, sit down in front of a computer again, and actually do something I enjoy. Um, that's why I learned programming. But then after graduating um, and after applying for everywhere, I found out that the only thing that, that really that degree was good for was getting into the second year university of um, or getting into the last uh, semester of second year university, which I didn't take that opportunity. And so uh, I realized I kind of screwed myself over a bit too late. Um, and so here I am now learning code on Godot or scripting engine um, and trying to remember as best I can everything I learned those years ago. And it's like a lot of it is making sense. It's just, it's hard. I don't mean to complain, to be honest. I just, I just literally want so bad to be normal like everyone else. And, and, and I know that that's probably a dumb way of putting it, right? To be normal like everyone else, but... It would be nice, you know? It would be nice, it would be nice to, to be able to function like other people do. Like there's little literal people I see that show up to work and it's like they don't have the issues that I have. And when I talk about my issues, just because like they're like well what was the the issue with getting into work today and it's like okay well you're not like hr or anything but basically um like this is the issues that i have and they look at me and they're like i am so sorry and it's like i wish i could be like you i, I wish i could 
I could not have these issues. I wish I could not have these problems, but I was born allergic to milk, and for 24 years, my parents lied to me about me having an allergy at all, so that when I was feeling these issues, they were like, oh, that's normal. But it wasn't normal. It was a very clear sign that something was not okay. And so I just dealt with it, and now my perception of normal is completely warped because I'm so used to so much pain that, like, people saw me walk some stuff off that most people wouldn't be able to walk away from. Like, that, that was the level of normal of my life, was that I could get thrown off of the second-story balcony onto cement, and I could get up and walk it off. Because I'd felt worse. I, I could just- people are like, you just tank stuff, and it's like, yeah. But now I'm looking back at it now, and I'm like... But it's because I was tanking something 20 times worse. And somehow surviving. Like, when, when I got told by several physicians now that, that from what I've experienced, I shouldn't be alive. Um, they mean that. Like, I, I've, I've somehow had a durability that is beyond what the average person has. And now it's failing me, because eventually you damage something too much, it starts to break. So now I'm trying to fix these issues to, to, to roll myself back, but it should have been fixed a long time ago. It's just I was lied to about what normal was. And it's real funny that my family focused more on the cosmetic fixes than they did on the actual, like, real fixes. Um, because if you've seen pictures of my face, th that face has been altered. Um, that's not what my face was going to look like. Uh, I had an overbite. Um, and I had really jagged teeth. Um, like, and I mean really jagged teeth, like top and bottom. Uh, so of course there were braces to straighten that out, which I think we've kind of normalized now, but that, that straightening did happen. But for me, they actually shifted the top of my skull back. So the face that you see on me is not like the side profile, the front profile. That's not how I started out looking. I was, I was probably 14 when they started doing this to me. Um, and of course at a kid at that age, like you, you don't really understand, or at least I shouldn't say you don't really understand. A 14 year old kid can understand, but no one ever tells a 14 year old kid what's going to happen and what they can expect. It's always through the parents. And so that happened to me, and I literally had my face altered. I, if you see me smile, my canines, my, my, uh, from the, like the front two teeth, side ones, uh, the ones beside that, and then the ones after those, those are the canine teeth. Um, my canines, my canines were, were lower. They were actually fangs. And, I had no consent on having those rammed up into my skull. Um, and it happened at such a young age that, as far as I can tell from from uh, previous x-rays, the, the teeth just adjusted. Like, my, my teeth weren't as long as they were, were before. Um, for whatever happened, part of the tooth just dissolved. Um, and so... Like, like, some of the roots, roots dissolved or, like, reformed just over the years. But I used to have fangs, and I loved those about me. Like, I, I knew that the bottom smile was... was off, but... Um... Everyone thought that I wasn't smiling because I, I, um... I had bad teeth. But I wasn't smiling because I wasn't happy for a different reason. Um, the, the bottom teeth, the top teeth getting straightened out, that was fine. Getting rid of my fangs? Thank you very much. I, I wanted those so bad. Even as a kid, that was part of my identity, and now when I smile, I don't see those anymore. And... I don't mean that they were, like, super long. They were just slightly lower than my front teeth, and it was noticeable, and I loved that. It, it was something, I guess, a bit savage that I just enjoyed seeing on myself. And now I don't have that, and... Now I've, I've set myself up with a dentist that I get to go and ask, is there any way that we can bring those down again? Like, because I know that they were lower. They literally brought them up. And I'm wondering if it's possible to bring them down or if that's too much of a procedure. Like, I might just have to consign that to the void. Um, 
but like it's something that I really do want. And I know that my teeth are still floating around because I still have to have a retainer and sometimes I forget and it really hurts. Um, so there might be the ability to actually drag those down and actually give me uh, a way to have those heal. Like, I don't care if I have to get braces again. I I will take that for those teeth, you know? Uh, maybe there's a different way. Maybe there's a better way. So it's just one of those things. Like, my, my mouth got completely changed, and that actively affected how I was able to play instruments. And I also had my whole upper jaw changed. Um, so the upper part of my skull got pushed back um, using, uh, using the braces as sort of a, a grill. Um, they attached something that was went outside of my mouth, and I had to wear it uh, day and night for, for several months. And then um, I had to wear it at night, every night, which I did, and it, it brought my, my whole front jaw back. So like, it, it's kind of funny when people are like, oh, you'll get face surgery and, and you know, you'll, you'll still look like you. And it's like, honey, my face is already fake. Like, I, it, it wasn't supposed to look like this. Um, or at least it didn't grow like this. This this has been altered. This has been... I looked... People called me like a young David Tennant growing up. And it felt... That kind of like gave me a sense of imposter syndrome because I knew what had happened to my face. And... When people were like, oh, you look like David Tennant, I was like, great, so they reconfigured my face to look like David Tennant. That's the way that I took it. Like, I was... They couldn't leave me be... So they made me look like someone who's famous and popular. That is a hard thing to walk away from, especially when like no one explains what they're doing. They're like, oh, we're fixing an overbite, but it's like, did the overbite need to be fixed? Was it that bad? Like, and and then now I get to, to, to look at people and be like, oh, you're so beautiful. And it's like, yeah, but how much of that was fake? Like, with, with at least with HRT, and even with something like face feminization surgery, even that, if I can get it, would feel more natural than what happened to me with the braces. Because I guess one was consent, one was done without it. Yeah, I don't know how else to explain that. Sorry for the morning trauma info dump. But on a positive note, um, we're almost near the end. Um, if you can see that, we're almost near the end of the uh, script reference. We'll be running into um, the overview of key concepts, which is not uh, that much. Um, and then this is the step-by-step -step guide, which which was was uh, sort of brought over. Um, so this is key concepts. Um, and then if we check the node tree. Um, yeah, so we'll be going through overview, and then it's the first look at the Godot's editor, um, and then uh, down here it's it's step by step, which I I don't think this is going to be too big. The first look. Um, so. Uh, and then it's the Godot's design philosophy, which could be a fun read through um, as to like what their their the creators were, were doing with Godot. Yeah, yeah, consent does matter, especially for surgeries. And the thing is, is that um, I grew up in a family where consent consent was almost unilaterally given to the men, um, and never to children. And the one thing that like can, like consistently bothered me all throughout growing up was um, that like I had more choices and freedom than my sister did, 
Which I saw as wrong, because my sister was the more responsible one out of the two of us. Like, th there were things that my extended family and even my family let me do that, like, my sister kind of deserved but never got. And it, it, it legit wore, like, wore on me. Like, I was, I was literally watching things happen and being like, well, why do I get to decide this? Right? Like, wh why, why is this my decision when, like, my sister is the one that's more responsible and has more knowledge on this? And my sister fought for her, like, I watched her fight for the respect in her family. Like, my sister went and did amazing things. She set up every single recycling program that our school had. She was the one that set up uh, a whole other, um, like, after-school programs. She got involved in the local community. She did all of this stuff, and it was like, I was watching all of it, and, um... I was watching all of it, and it was just like... I could never understand her drive, if that made any sense. Like, I could not understood, understand what drove her to do all of this stuff. But then it finally clicked into me at some point that it was like, oh, it's because if she doesn't do this... She'll never, and I mean this honestly, she'll never get the respect that she deserves. And that, that hit real hard. That was, that was some of the most like eye-opening things for me in life was just like the amount of effort that she needed to put in um, to, to just be seen on an equal footing. Like she put in so much more effort than everyone else did. And it's like she she could only ever maybe break even. Like she could only maybe make e make it to be seen as as an equal voice. And she was loud and she was opinionated and she was up in everybody's face about things. She had like next to no fear. And it was like, I recognize now that she definitely did have fear, but she never let it drive her because every act of her doing something that got recognition was an act of rebellion. And in a way, I, I kind of, I kind of, I envied my sister, and I still do. It was actually, I had many motivations for getting into programming, and one of them um, was I saw how hard my sister worked, and I was like, I need to, to do something that can prove to my family and to me that I can be just as hard as my sister and that there will be no less respect. And my family was like, oh, become a mechanic. You know, go get an engineering degree, go get something useful. And I stopped and I went, well, why? Why is programming not useful? And I literally found out through a conversation that one of the things that they didn't believe why, why technology was a, uh, why programming was um, an actual useful degree was because the leading contrib contributor to it, when they looked it up online, was Ada Lovelace, a woman. And their methodology, I could see it from a mile away, was that if a woman made a field, it wasn't going to get you respect. And that's kind of why I looked at it and went, I'm gonna go for it. Fuck you. Like that, that literally, that, that fuck you mentality is what drove me to get my degree. Fuck you. Fuck all of you. For thinking that a field pioneered by a woman, where, where some of the greatest programmers on Earth are women. The reason why we landed the first landing on the moon, the, the first Mars rover, those were women. Those are actually women who were, uh, I think one was the, either the grandmother or the mother of the woman who did the, uh, the one for, uh, um, the, uh, the Mars rover landing. With the code written by those women, put men on the moon and rovers on Mars. And it will be the same code that is adapted and changed to get the first humans on Mars. It will be their legacy continued. And if both of those women can do it, why is it that it is not a respected field? And so that's why I went into programming. And that's why I had a huge problem whenever someone was like, 
oh, Charles Babbage was the first programmer. Charles Babbage was an engineer. Engineers know how to program. A programmer is a person who exclusively deals with programs and does not have a uh, engineering degree. Like, engineers can program, but programmers program. And Ada was the one that not only built a lot of the programs, uh, is suspected to have built a lot of the programs, and also published them. It was her work. She was a programmer. And it is her field. And so, like, whenever someone someone came at me with, with the Charles Babbage thing, it's like, you're not erasing women out of this. Oh, all of the greatest programmers have been men. No, they haven't. The, the, the technological advancements of programming have been absolutely advanced by men, 100%. That's that's the that's not a not a contest. But if you're saying the most inspirational people in programming are the men, no, it's the women. It's it's a degree that was built by them. I don't care if the majority of video game programmers are men. I don't care if if people like to try and see it as a men's degree. It's it was made by women. It has been pioneered by women. It has been supported by women. And some of the greatest achievements of our lifetime, of, of humanity, have been from women. And what even gets me is there are even trans women in programming that do amazing things that go completely un unrecognized. And that, to me, has just been more of the same shit that my family went through. You know, more, more, more of the same bullshit of, like, you can't get recognition. Well, fuck you. Because these women are amazing. And if I get to walk in the shadow of their footsteps, that would be fantastic. And so that is why I went into programming and I aimed to get my degree. I was trying to get a uh, bachelor's of engineering, but that's just because I was inspired to and I, I screwed up on calculus. I, I screwed up on calculus for software engineering and that scared me out of it. And what I should have done, and I recognize this in post, is just drop the calculus courses and continue on with the programming. I could have gone through all four years in the programming degree all the way up to uh, the fourth year, gotten all of the programming courses done, um, even done co-op, and then taken another fifth year to just do... to just do the calculus courses and any electives that I needed. All I needed to do was get into the next semester. And that's what I should have focused on doing. And, um... I, I got scared, I went down to the college level, and here I am. But now it's it's kind of, I'm, I'm back at the same point now, right? Like, I, I, in the process of all of that, I figured out that I was trans. Um, I've been taking strides to uh, transition, to change my face, to uh, make sure that legally I'm, I'm recognized for, for the way that I identify and the way that, that I ultimately feel. And, um... It's kind of become a bit more real for me again, which is why I'm doing this. Is I recognizing that I am a woman kind of made me realize that like one of the things that I envied about my sister was the fact that she got to do all of these great stuff that I wanted to do but couldn't. And I pushed those feelings down so far that I couldn't really reconcile with what I was feeling. So there I was feeling, you know, off, right? Um, and now I finally have context. And so that context has has helped me um, sort of be, become a better person, I guess now. Um, made me realize that like a lot of a lot of the stuff that I was feeling, uh, a lot of the rivalry I felt towards my sister was because I couldn't be who I wanted to be and I could never tell anyone because of the way that my family would have treated someone like me, which is by the way, um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be alive today if, if I'd come out back then um so I'm, I'm so glad that that college that sorry that high school is over and i really wish i'd, I'd had the the strength to come out in college and just cut them off and tell them to, to get out of my life because i had that opportunity i just didn't take it i didn't take it until i was uh 26 years old and then i i started transitioning later that year um it's been a hard road a hard road of, of rediscovery of self-discovery but ultimately, it's it's kind of like I'm, I'm back to where I was before, and I have more of a drive to do this than I've ever had before. Like, someone suggested, hey, you should do it on Twitch. And I'm like, you know what, maybe I should. And now here I am, I'm doing it. I'm going through the code review, and it's like, I'm legit enjoying doing this again. 
even if it is just sitting at a table at lunch and at work and just scrolling through my phone. By the way, I have not been charging my phone. Um, hi, you're actually uh, at 79%. And while I have 15 minutes left before I need to leave, we're going to try and see if this fast charge actually works. But yeah, no, it's like, even if I'm just sitting at lunch, reading through the, through the Godot documentation, um, going through, you know, the, the, the GD script reference and, and all of this, um, then that's what I'll do. And, and eventually I'll be able to actually program something. And I hope that I get to make something that is amazing. Not for any other reason than like to be successful, but just to like point out that, that we can do great things when we put our minds to it. And that despite what people may say about us, we are worth, we are worth the effort, you know? So. Uh, but yeah. Um, it's real funny because the, the chat screwed up and uh, it doesn't pick up the bots posts. Like it picked up the last one, but it didn't pick up, pick up the next one that just happened. Um, not sure what's happening with that. Um, I don't, I don't, it's for that reason that I don't trust, uh, Twitch chat, um, in, in OBS Studio anymore, because <laughs> it just misses messages. But yeah, no, it's, um, it's a matter of, I guess, finally applying myself and actually having a drive to apply myself, because before it's like I did all this thing to basically say fuck you to the, to the people in my life, right? That, like, my sister went off and, and she wasn't lucky or intelligent, um, or driven, and it wasn't just, you know, the, the... They said a lot of things about her, about why she was doing what it was. And they're like, oh, it's spite. Once she finds a man, she will, like, settle down. And I was like, I hope she never does. And as far as I know, she she's never has. Um, she has a kid of her own right now. Um, but, like... And, and she's not with her, her, uh her husband, but it's like, I hope she never settles down because I really want everyone in my family who ever said anything about her like that to just eat their own fucking words because she has done so much just to get any ounce of recognition that it sucks that they still don't give her the recognition she deserves. Like she, she went to school and became a nurse with the intent of doing practicum overseas for a couple years and then going back to get her doctorate and i still hope that she goes back and gets her doctorate it's actually one of the things i'm like i'm, I'm really wondering if she's gonna do because she graduated in uh 2014 i think or yeah she graduated in, in 2014 2015 um and i 100% hope that she is still planning to go back to school and get her doctorate. I, I, I want to see her become a doctor because I think, I think from a personal level for my sister, she deserves to realize her dreams. And I want everyone in my family to just shut the fuck up because they're just horrible people and Like, every single one of the kids that came out of that family, even the extended family, th they didn't end up okay. Like, we all didn't end up okay. Um, by and far, I think, uh... My sister and I had, had it the best. But if we're considering all of the things that I went through, that's, that's saying a lot. Like, that's, that's, there, there's so many of the other kids went through so much worse. And I just really want, I guess, one of my reasons for doing this is to finally tell myself that I don't need to keep trying to prove myself to them. And I really want my sister to, to, to go and, and, you know, achieve her dreams because at the end of the day, it's her dreams that matter, not other people's expectations on her. And I want her to just burn the expectations other people had and do what she thinks is right. But yeah, I'm going to be making a video game because if I can be successful at making a video game, and I don't even mean in the sense of like monetarily successful, if people can pick up my video game that I'm 
that I'm planning to make throughout all of this and find fun and joy in it and laugh and smile, that's success to me. Um, yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm probably gonna sell it uh, if I can. Um, it'll probably end up on Steam for, you know, a real cheap price. But the whole point of it is just to, you know, give people the opportunity to, to have fun, to laugh, to smile, to play, you know? And that's kind of what I want. All, all I want is to make something that can sort of enrich people's lives. And if I can do that, then I can successfully put, you know, that, that part of my past 100% behind me and go, I am successful. I've, I've done this one thing that I set out to do, and that's good enough. And then anything I do from here is just proving to the world that I still have more to give. Because ultimately, that's it, it's my philosophy in life that, that the, the, the meaning of life is to experience. And that means experiencing the good and the bad. And that means making new experiences as well as uh, being along for the ride for the experiences of other people. So that's kind of what this is. This, this is a new experience for me. This whole reading code and, and getting ready to, to do um, uh, getting ready to, to do all of this um, and actually like doing this, this is a completely new experience for me. And I kind of want to want to have people come along and, and watch this. Um, I was previously putting this in the uh, software development, um, category, but for the time being, I'm going to do it in just the chatting until I'm actually, um, following the, the 2D, I think it's your first 2D game. We're going to do first 2D and first 3D, and they're going to be small things, but then I'm going to try and combine aspects of both to make something new. And that whole process is, um, prerequisites content, and this is just contents. So we're, we're going to do all of that, but for the time being, um, I don't even remember what we're on. We're on Godot's key concepts. We're, we're here. Anyway, I have to go and get ready for work. So thank you all for coming to join me. Um, ideally, when I get back from work, I will be doing more of this, um, just because I think I need the boost. And uh, also it's the weekend, so uh, we'll be going from there. So once again, thank you all for watching. Please be safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Things are getting a bit rough elsewhere in the world. So uh, as always, be safe. Um, be kind to one another. Uh, even my uh, popped out Twitch chat did not catch your uh, message there. Uh, um, David, sorry. Brain lost ability to communicate there. Uh, not even not even my my chat pick that up but anyway um i will see you guys all later yeah already said this a thousand times um yeah so yeah uh tune back in later for more of this chaos bye